Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with loaded twice-baked sweet potatoes. That's right, I've loaded potatoes before, and I've twice-baked potatoes before, but I don't believe I've ever loaded and twice-baked a potato. And if I have, it certainly wasn't with a sweet potato. But boy, am I glad I did. And since we're heading straight into the season where we're looking for spectacular side dishes, I think the timing is perfect for sharing this easy and beautiful recipe. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with hopefully four uniformly sized sweet potatoes. And when I say uniform, I'm not talking about length. It's all about the girth. So when we're picking these out, we want to find ones that are about the same size around the middle. And what we'll do after those are placed on a baking sheet is perform the old poke, oil, and roast, which means we're going to first prick the skin with a knife so they don't explode, which is extremely unlikely to happen, but I still enjoy saying it. And once pricked, we'll go ahead and drizzle on some olive oil and then give them a little massage. Since I like my sweet potatoes like I like my bodybuilders, well greased and glistening. And then what we'll do once those are evenly spaced is transfer those into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 35 minutes or so, or until completely tender. And what we'll do while we're waiting for those to roast is move on to the filling, which is gonna start by adding some sliced up bacon to this pan set over medium heat. And of course, bacon is the only mandatory ingredient in a loaded baked potato. And what we'll do is cook that stirring until it just starts to crisp up. And as you may have heard me mention before, one great visual clue is that bacon fat's going to start to look foamy. And that means most of the fat is rendered out and it's getting crispy. All right, you see that? And as soon as our bacon looks a little something like this, we'll go ahead and add a handful of sliced green onions, also known as scallions, as well as some diced jalapeno pepper. And what we'll do is stir that in and only cook it for one minute. And the reason we only need a minute is because those peppers and onions are going to continue to cook in that hot bacon fat. And by the time this sits and cools down, those are going to be perfectly cooked. So what we'll do after one minute is simply turn off the heat and reserve those until needed. And by the time we've sliced and cooked those ingredients, theoretically our potatoes are done. And we'll go ahead and pull those out of the oven and of course test those with a knife. And since we're going to mash this, we really do want to make sure they're tender. So give them the old polka polka and make sure. And at this point, what we'll do is let these cool down a little bit before cutting off the tops and scooping out the flesh. And ideally you do this when they're warm and easy to handle and not still dangerously hot like mine were. But either way, we're gonna take a knife and cut off the top third of the potato, angling our knife about 45 degrees. And we'll go all the way around and then pop off the top. And I should mention any sweet potato is gonna work for this. But I really like the orange flesh the best, since I believe it's the most beautiful and the most nutritious. And try to be careful not to cut off more than a third from the top. All right, since that's gonna provide for a larger shell to fill, and these are gonna be easier to handle and work with. And then once we have all those tops taken off, the next step, of course, is gonna be to scoop all that tender flesh into a bowl, all right, from the tops and the shells. And one tip here is not to scoop out too much from the bottoms. All right, I try to leave at least a quarter inch of flesh inside which is gonna give these a little bit of structure so they don't collapse when we bake them. And then what we'll do once all that's been scooped into a bowl is season it up with some kosher salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and of course a little bit of our old friend cayenne pepper. And then besides that, we're also gonna to toss in a handful of sharp white cheddar, as well as a nice big spoon of creme fraiche, or a spoon of sour cream, or even a splash of regular cream. And then we're gonna finish up by squeezing in the juice of half a lime. And then once all that's in there, we'll take a potato masher and we'll mash this up nice and smooth before we add our onion, bacon, pepper mixture. All right, we don't want that stuff to get all smashed up. So what we'll do is mash this first and then we'll use a slotted spoon to transfer that stuff in. At which point we'll give that one last mix. And that's it, once mixed, that filling is ready to stuff back into our sweet potatoes. Oh, and I should mention, if you're not into spicy things, you could, if you want, do this with sweet peppers instead. I mean, you are, after all, the beto of your sweet potato. So if you elected not to use the jalapeno, that'd be fine. But personally, I think the heat from the jalapeno pairs perfectly with this starchy sweetness here. But either way, we'll go ahead and mix that up and fill our shells. And once we have that transferred in and we've done any final fine tuning, we'll finish these off by scattering a little extra cheese over the top. All right, not too much. All right, we don't want complete coverage because sometimes we'll take that first bite with a fork and all the cheese comes off in one giant piece. So instead, let's just do a nice scattering. 
And that's it. Once cheesed, we'll go ahead and pop those into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until they're heated through and the tops have started to brown. And they look absolutely awesome and hopefully something very similar to this. Check it out. I mean, if those don't look like something you'd want to eat, I don't know what does. And at this point, those are ready to transfer onto our plates or in my case, onto a platter so I could take some pictures. And then once I had those plated up, I attempted to do one of the most difficult maneuvers in all of the culinary arts. And that's to get small, round, bouncy sliced green onions to stay on top of a rounded, slick, cheesy surface. But eventually I got it done. And finally, my loaded twice-baked sweet potatoes were officially ready to enjoy. And as fantastic as these looked, the taste and texture was even better. Okay, one of my main complaints with sweet potatoes is that they're too sweet and not savory enough. But here, because of that smoky, meaty bacon, and bittersweet heat from the peppers, and acidity from the lime, and sharpness from our cheddar, we've really pushed this flavor profile much further down to the savory end of the scale. All right, to be honest, I almost forgot I was eating a sweet potato, which, because they're so sweet, can really be sort of a one-note experience, but not here. We have so many notes, and all of them good. But anyway, that's it. What we're calling loaded twice-baked sweet potatoes. Above and beyond the great taste and appearance, these are also very versatile since they're just as effective as a spectacular side dish for your holiday turkey as they are served as a meal placed next to a simple salad on any random weeknight. Which is why I really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.